All right, good evening. Design Review Board uh, number one, public meeting of January 26, 2012 is called to order. Please refrain from talking amongst yourselves during the meeting and please turn off or put on vibrate all cell phones and pagers. If you need to talk, please leave the meeting room. Anyone who wishes to speak, including applicants, is asked to completely fill out one of the speaker's cards provided at the table by the front door and submit it to staff. You'll be called to present a case or speak on a specific item as desired. Anyone who wishes to be re-noticed about a project must completely fill out one of the postcards provided at the table by the front door and submit it to staff to receive notice of subsequent meetings. Current DRB agendas are available by calling our DRB hotline at 818-548-3171 or by visiting our website at www.ci.glendale.ca.us. A handout, a handout describing the procedures of the meeting, possible board decisions, and DRB uh, reconsideration and appeals is available at the table by the front door. Please note that appeals must be filed within 15 calendar days of the DRB decision date. The chairperson may reorder, may reorder agenda items at their discretion. Roll call. Mr. Ellis? Absent. Mr. Insua? Here. Ms. Palmer? Here. Mr. Simonian? Present. And Mr. Yu? Here. Report regarding the posting of the agenda. The agenda for this meeting was posted on the bulletin board outside City Hall at or before 5 p.m. on January 19, 2012. Oral communications. Uh, is there anybody in the audience that wishes to, to speak on an item not a part of the agenda? Do you have any cards? No cards. Okay. Uh, we are down to our review calendar. Uh, the first is the election of a new chair. Wow, already. <clears throat> should we wait? We I'm forgetting the chair. Yeah, should we wait till... Is Mr. is Mr. Ellis going to make it today? Yeah, oh, I'm sorry, he is not. Okay. Yeah, he's he's not. He uh, was not available. Today. Can we do it to the next meeting until he's here, or? It's up to you. What do you think? Yeah, let's just wait till he comes back, so we have a full. If we have a full. Yeah. Okay. We're going to try and wait. If you're okay with that. I'm okay with that. Fine. <laughs> okay, so you you'd like to, us to put that so on the, the next next agenda? Next agenda? Okay, great. We need to move that, or? Um, no, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll move down on to our regular um, design review case calendar. Uh, the first item on the agenda is my item, one of my items. Um, it's design review case number 1PDR 2010 051-B. It's at 4444 Lowell Avenue. Again, good evening, Chair Palmer and members of the Design Review Board. Uh, the first item before you is uh, case number 2010-051B. Project, uh, the project is to construct um, a proposed 9,345 square foot gymnasium at the Shanlian School. Uh, the subject site is 4.59 acres in size, and the gymnasium will be located in the northeastern portion of the site. <clears throat> The board last heard this project on September 27th of 2011, where it returned the project for redesign with several conditions. The, the plans actually, oh, let me pull the plans. Sorry about that. They are now before you. The site planning uh, of the project has not changed significantly since the initial submittal, although modifications have been made in response to uh, the board's comments. Uh, an entrance to the gym is proposed on the western elevation of this building, and, and within the gym, uh, bleachers have been reconfigured to allow uh, this new entrance. And you'll, I'll just come up. <clears throat> This area, and the bleachers have been uh, reconfigured so it allows access into the gym. Here. 
Regarding the landscaping, an evergreen ash tree is proposed within the southern landscape area to fill a, uh, a gap in the in the uh, tree canopy. That was uh, that was proposed um, in the last iteration as well. Uh, the trees in this area are already ash trees. This would be another ash tree. Uh, Brisbane box and blue Palo Verde trees are proposed um, in the landscape area adjacent to the gym surrounding it. The mass and scale of the gym has not changed since the previous submittal as well. The, the maximum height of the gym is 32 feet. Um, mechanical equipment will be uh, located above the storage restroom wings of the building and closed within the uh, lower roof, which is a change from the previous submittal. Additionally, uh, solar tubes will be installed on the roof of the main portion of the building, which again uh, address one of your conditions. Uh, with the exception of solar tubes and the me mechanical equipment, um, the building design has not changed significantly and is consistent with the existing buildings on the school campus. The board had eight conditions and considerations um, regarding the project at the last meeting. Um, I can go over them, otherwise um, that concludes my presentation. Would you like me to go over them or not? It's been a while, why don't you go over those? Sure. Please. <clears throat> okay, the first um, the first uh, consideration was uh, consider design changes to the gym, which would allow the building to stand on its own and provide an architectural focus for the building or for the campus, I should say. Uh, no significant changes to the gym from the previous uh, submittal are proposed. Uh, the applicants believe that the additional cost related to um, these design changes are not feasible, um, and given the limited visibility of the gym, the applicant would prefer the more economical approach. And um, they can speak to that further if you uh, like. The second was introduce natural light into the building. And as I mentioned in the presentation, there are 20 uh, solar tubes uh, proposed to provide natural light on the, on the, main, um, the main portion of the gym. The third uh, condition, if the building remains in its current configuration, the height of the building shall be a maximum of 32 feet. However, if the design is revised, the maximum height of the building can go to 35 feet. As I mentioned in my presentation, they have not um, uh, changed the configuration and the building uh, is 32 feet in height. The fourth uh, consideration, Consider installing the me mechanical equipment within the storage restroom wings of the building. The mechanical equipment are proposed within the storage restroom wings and will not be located on the roof of the gym. <clears throat> the fifth, uh, review the site planning of the building. Consider moving the building five to ten feet toward the rear of the property. Uh, the location of the proposed gymnasium has not changed since the previous uh, submittal. Moving the building east would result in a loss of parking spaces and or loss of playground area and increased visibility of the gymnasium from properties located along 2nd Street. <clears throat> Relocate the bleachers to the opposite side of the court to enable an entry from the classroom side. Uh, the bleachers have not been relocated to the opposite side of the gym gymnasium. However, they have been uh, reconfigured to allow access to the gymnasium on the west side um, of the building from the main portion of the Shanlin School campus. Uh, number seven, proposed landscape complementary to the building and the surroundings. The number of trees in the landscape design shall be consistent with the staff report. Uh, an evergreen ash tree is proposed in the uh, large southern uh, landscape area to fill the uh, tree canopy gap. Uh, this area contains a number of evergreen ash trees. There are four Brisbane box uh, trees and one blue Palo Verde tree uh, within the landscape area adjacent to within the landscape areas adjacent to the gym. Uh, U pine are proposed between the gymnasium and the classroom building to the west. Uh, blue hibiscus, kangaroo paw, and blue Seneca will be planted within the landscape areas um, as sort of uh, foundation planting to the gym. Uh, the plant palette proposes both drought tolerant and complementary to the uh, proposed gymnasium. 
And then the final uh, condition consideration was uh, propose a tree type other than the ash tree in the southern landscape area due to its invasive root system. Uh, the applicant uh, continues to propose an evergreen ash tree within this area. Um, while the area, while the tree has an invasive root system, um, this area is already uh, planted with ash trees. And additionally, there aren't any structures within 10 feet of the tree um, which would uh, interfere or which would undermi be undermined by the, the uh, root system. Those were the conditions considerations. Um, that concludes what I have to say. If you have questions, let me know. Otherwise, we can. Any questions from the board? Okay. I think we have eight notices here. The first one would be Rodney Kahn. Please give your name and address for the record, please. I certainly will. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Chair and board members and city staff. My name is Rodney Kahn. My offices are located on North Brand Boulevard here in the city of Glendale. Uh, we listened uh, to your comments uh, from the last Design Review Board meeting, and we were able to incorporate many of them, not all of them, but many of them, into the revisions that you see here today. Uh, as I mentioned last time, I think you can appreciate the location of the gymnasium is on the interior of the school campus. Uh, it has limited visibility from the surrounding properties and we've actually designed it to be consistent with the architectural style, the height, the materials, the treatment of the buildings on the campus that it's adjacent to. This is also the same design, same location, same treatment that the City Council reviewed and approved for all of our other discretionary applications. The staff has gone over the changes, so there's no reason for me to repeat what they've already done. Uh, with me this evening, we have our architect, our landscape architect, our engineer. We actually have members, again, from our Shamlian Gymnasium Committee. So that concludes uh, our remarks. Uh, we're all available to answer questions, and we also uh, have some of our consultants that will speak as well. Thank you. Thank you. Actually, I'm sorry. I neglected to mention... Um, you all got a, a packet of uh, letters or correspondence in front of you this afternoon from the previous week um, regarding the, the project. Um, I also uh, received uh, three voicemails or I had brief conversations with people um, on the telephone expressing concerns regarding traffic and noise. Okay, thank you. Harut Kasabian? My name is Harut Kasabian. I am a member of the gym committee as well as a parent, Shamalian. I Your address, too, please. Address is 1049 Avon Oak Terrace, Glendale, California. Um, I, again, urge you to support this project. It would be a, a positive uh, step towards uh, protecting our kids uh, from various weather conditions, which was something that we've discussed in the past. And, and I think it would be a, a, a nice um, enclosed uh, playground area for kids to be uh, playing in safely uh, and, and away from the cold and the heat that we have to deal with throughout the year. Once again, thank you for your time, and I uh, would appreciate your support. Thank you. I have a, I have a question oh. for him. Since you're on the committee and yes. you've been very involved, do you have any thoughts about when you have communities around this facilities that are not supportive. Do you have any thoughts about that? Well, uh, my thoughts uh, uh, are as follows, and I've, I have mentioned this before. Um, we cannot be outside. We cannot ignore the community. Uh, we appreciate their concerns, and I think throughout the years, the school, families, and parents, everyone has uh, worked and done their best to, um, to minimize uh, the amount of uh, impact that if there is any to the community we've tried uh, many uh, different options you know uh, working with the city as well as the community to to address their concerns um, I also live in an area where there are schools nearby where I live and and it is part of everyday commute and everyday life you know to kind of 
get accommodated to these conditions. We know, you know, certain times of the day there's going to be a little more traffic than other times. But at the end of the day, we are all living in the same city, and, and I think it has to be uh, uh, kind of a, uh, a community support and, and, and as well as, you know, us uh, parents, you know, to kind of work together in, in resolving these issues. I do appreciate uh, some of the issues they have, but at the same time, as I said, you know, whatever it is that is asked of us as parents uh, and as uh, members of the school, we've done our best to address uh, these concerns, and, uh, and we hope that this will be a, a positive result for all of us, you know, for the community as well as the school itself. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Brian Stiles. No, Brian Stiles. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. Linda Schatz. Linda Schatz, 3857, representing our family home. Condition 7 regarding landscaping makes specific reference to buffering the south side. There is also mention of landscaping areas adjacent to the gym, between the gym and classrooms, and within the reconfigured parking lot. It is unclear to me that the considerations specifically deal with the east side, which, is, which backs up to 2nd Avenue. Um, the landscaping right now is on private property. There are cypresses that can die. And we would like the reassurance that Chamberlain School acknowledges that it maintain and replant when necessary such shielding on the east side as well. Although the recommendations state that the gym will not be readily visible from the surrounding properties, I will reiterate that the homes closest to the school on 2nd Avenue are at the same elevation and at the subject site and will be visible. Condition 1 refers to considering design changes to the gym because the design review board felt it was a missed opportunity regarding agri agri I'm sorry, architectural design. However, no significant design changes are proposed. I don't know what to say to that. Um, no changes are proposed because of the cost and the limited visibility of the gym. Again, if the visibility is an issue to design, landscaping, maximum height requirements, placement of mechanical equipment, etc. why aren't we using story poles? In addition, I would ask that you all please consider the issue of lighting, that lighting should be limited in height, shielded to direct lighting downward, and placed so that lighting does not shine on adjacent properties. We would also ask that the board thoroughly examine the stacked parking idea, if it's appropriate at this meeting. Even with an attendant, it is doubtful that people will choose stacked parking versus neighborhood street parking. How and who will enforce this plan? I appreciate your considerations. Thank you. Thank you. Joni Larson. Good evening, board and staff. Um, I was, unfortunately, I could not attend the first design and review board we meeting. We have your name and address. Oh, I'm sorry. Joni Larson. On, I live on 2nd Avenue. Thank you. Um, but I just wanted to speak from my heart tonight instead of writing notes I decided I just wanted to look you in the eyes and ask you to consider uh, if you lived on 2nd Avenue or on a street where you would have a gymnasium in your sight as you turn down your street every day or you look out your windows when you get up in the morning you go to pour your coffee and you see um, pretty much a, a block building out your kitchen window the homes on 2nd Avenue especially the ones closest to the school are on a second level. Their living quarters are a second level. Their garages on the, are on ground level. So they look outside their front windows and they can see that. They see the school. They can see the buildings that are currently there. And there is not proper screening if they're going to have the gymnasium that close. Um, I would just ask, I feel that we've been to every meeting and as neighbors, I went around and spoke to quite a few of them. We had a petition signed by over f almost 50 people opposing this gymnasium. And it's not that they're opposed to having a gym for children. That was not it. It's a land use issue. And it had to do with traffic, parking, noise, lighting, and views of the neighbors and property values. 
And yes, the city council, it was appealed and city council voted for the variance to be passed. So we feel as neighbors it's a done deal. So I'd ask you as a neighbor, personally, to please consider if this was in your backyard, would you want proper screening at least so you didn't have to see it every day as you drove down your street? Or you wouldn't have to see it out your kitchen window? Or you wouldn't have light shining in your windows or in your backyards or noise from traffic or people parking on your street when they might come down your street instead of parking in the preferred parking that the mitigating measure said that they're going to have a parking attendant? Who's enforcing that? Who's going to make sure that's done? Because I believe they have, um, I know that they have conditions that they have to follow in the, under their current variance. And condition number, number seven, excuse me, dry mouth, condition number seven is not being followed. They, the principal himself has said he's tried to get the parents to van pull, to bus. They don't want to. He can't make them. So who's going to make them park in the parking lot on the playground when they have special events, tournaments, and such? Thank you for your consideration. I have a question. Yes. Uh, quick question. Um, insofar as Second Avenue is concerned and, and the comment that you made that it's being utilized as a parking lot at times, uh, logistically, how, how would one park on Second Avenue and then reach the gymnasium? If there, that gate's to be closed, right? How, how, how would one? That uh, is under the current conditions, yes, that is listed. I believe it's condition number 19 that they are, there is no access to Second Avenue, only maintenance vehicles. And we know for a fact, and we've been through the process with, that the school, Mr. Khan himself, the applicant, has said that he is not asking for that now. Or now. But the school, since 2004, there have been, I have letters from 2004 when they were trying to get, um, excuse me, trying to get access from their back gate on 2nd Avenue to, for drop-off and pickup. So, but, and okay, so I understand because the question is, is on the drawings that we have, which yes. is what we're being considered to assess, it's specifically saying that the existing gate will, will remain, remain closed. closed, right? And so, if that gate is to remain closed, then we could certainly condition that. I'm wondering, is there another way one could access this property from Second Avenue that you know of? Because you live there, so you would know it a lot yes, better. Yes, they would come up Boston. So they'd have to go around and walk yes. around. Yes. Uh huh. Okay. Arto Kazarian. Arto Kazarian uh, address is uh, 1720 Basso in Glendale. I'm a board member and also the engineer for the project. I'm here to cordially ask you to approve this project as it is, and if you have any questions, I'll answer it. Do you have any questions? Um, I have a quick question. The, drawing, the drawings that you had before, uh, your structural depth was what? Like a foot, foot and a half? Structural depth? Yeah, of your roof. A roof, uh, it's five feet. On your previous drawings? I don't remember. But that's, that's how we have to allocate about five feet. Okay. Four to five feet is the estimated depth of the roof. Okay, we're not talking about the same drawing, so okay, that's good enough. I do have a question, and I'm doing it from memory. The height of the building from the previous submittal to the current submittal has stayed the same? No, 35 to 32. Okay, so it's been dropped. So that was the depth that. Uh, and my shot. package from. Cause, okay, hold, I was asking if that's a foot, but. Yeah. He doesn't recall, so. So we. So forgive me, just one moment. So, mm -hmm. Mr. Yu, before it was 35 feet. 35. And now it's currently. Top 30. of parapet, and then now it's 32. 32 feet. Yeah. Parapet's gone. Parapet is really, the parapet, really right? shallow. Very shallow. It's, it's like a foot. Mm -hmm. But what they did was the structure here is shown probably scaled maybe a foot, maybe a foot and a half. Yeah. Now they're showing a truss system that's six feet deep. Okay. So I, I, they're opting a remedy to keep the height as, as at a maximum that they can, basically. I seem to remember, and I apologize, Chair, that a gymnasium, when you looked at the standard architectural details, clearances for a gymnasium, that 
they a gymnasium needed from the clear from below needed something like 27 feet. So I, I'm, again, it's been months now. Can you can you tell me what the clear? They're asking for 24, and the previous maybe a little bit more, 25. But on that one, they're showing 24 okay. because of the six foot depth of the trusses that. So, they're but proposing. the clear underneath. They're it. saying 24. Okay, so that's okay. Okay, and then they just need six foot structural depth to carry the span. Yes. That's what they're saying now. Yeah. Right. Okay. <clears throat> it is. Thank you, sir. Okay. I'm trying Thank to you. remember. Any other questions? I have a question. If Rodney could come up I'm again, again right please. Right Are there any lights on this out exterior of the building? Yeah, there should be, and it should be shown on the elevation. If it's not, I'll ask our architect to come forward and kind of identify where we're looking at in terms of lighting. But it would just be lighting on the exterior of the building. I just like to know where that yeah, lighting is. Sure. Sure. This here, put this here, up here, put in the truss here, and I took out the mechanical. Okay. Very good. So this is a um, my name is Rory Seroyan. I'm the architect on record. Uh, my address is 128 South Kenwood Street there in Glendale, 91205. Honestly, I thought that we can deal with this lighting system as we go to a uh, plan check and we submit the plans for uh, electrical plan check. But uh, whatever we propose, yeah. uh, it's going to be sort of a diffused lighting. No glare, nothing. But do we know where that lighting will be? Uh, certainly, it would be towards the parking. Both sides. You mean the east side? In the east side and the southerly side, yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, we're going to close the public hearing. You want to start a discussion? Sure. sure. Um, since this is Design Review Board, issues like parking and variances and things of that nature don't impact or shouldn't or, or don't become part of the overall discussions that we do unless they impact design. So if a reduction of parking given through a variance or whatever the parking is, stacked parking with, with a, an attendant, that, those issues are beyond us. But if the limited space or the space that's remaining to do that work impacts the overall architecture and the siting and how it works with the project, I believe we could talk about that because what that then does to design is exactly what we are, design review. When I look at the adjacencies, as we talked about before, when I look at adjacencies of this project, its size, its mass and scale, and I look at how it relates to the adjacent property line, how it sits on the property line, my overall feeling it's too big a project for a relatively narrow site and its relationship to a non-school properties. So, so if this project for me was in a more um, um, uh, uh, school district, building, um, commercial district, things that, that, that would be able to accept, I think, a more um, 8 to 10 o'clock operation and how the building sits, I would think, okay, there's not going to be a lot of architectural impact on its adjacencies. But it's a residential neighborhood that has a lot of traffic, which is impacting the architecture and what does that mean to the architecture now if this was a surface basketball court non lighted at five o'clock tonight there would be no activity because it's the lights the impact the architecture doesn't impact the neighborhood so it's architectural impact from what it is today has minimal impact on its neighborhood. But when we build a multi-purpose facilities like an enclosed gymnasium that's of this design, there's going to be more impact on how it relates to itself, 
and how it relates to its community, which I believe Design Review Board should be looking at very carefully and cautiously. Um, I'm a little disappointed that the major aspects of what we talked about previously, the monolithic, big architecture of the gymnasium was not addressed. There's a lot of ways to create a gymnasiums that have a relatively lower impact on the architecture that's being managed. I am no expert, but I have done a couple gymnasiums, and one in particular that we did was up at Castaic, as you're driving up the number five, we did it for the county of Los Angeles about eight years ago, in which we used a bow string truss, so that as the stresses and the trusses expanded, you're, you have a bow string truss so that the roof design is dropping to one side. You can still maintain your clearance, but its roof elements and the way that it works wasn't as massive. This one doesn't do that. For me, they just have a regular standard truss, six foot deep, which you still have your monolithic thing. And I know, as I said before, things cost money. I know that when you're on a committee and a commission for a private school, you're you're working on a lot of donations. But those things don't cost necessarily more if it's well engineered and well designed, especially if you have a large community that's saying, we have a problem here. And I think there's a problem here. I'm a little disappointed that they did not explore more creative opportunities, as we said before, to minimize the box impact of this structure. There is a million ways that you can drop this impact. Here's your bottom cord of the truss. That's actually going this direction, so they're going this way. Here's your bottom cord, and you can drop those things to get a little bit more creative and bring in something that's not as vertically monolithic, and at the same time, bringing in natural light, not by light tubes, but by real clear story lighting. So for me to wrap up, I'm disappointed from what we're looking at, essentially the same structure. They've made relatively minor efforts to try to work with our comments and our, and our conditions. And it's something that unfortunately at this point I would find difficult to support. Mr. Yu? Sure. Uh, my comments will be short and brief. Um, I, I'm, not just a little disappointed, I guess I'm a little more than disappointed than that. Um, you know, they obviously didn't take into account what we were thinking about and what we discussed for great lengths of time to, to give those ideas to them. And so um, if they don't, I guess, put credence in what we have to say, then uh, you know, I don't see why we have to spend so much time putting a lot of credence into what you presented. So it's basically the same thing with a little bit of lipstick on it. Um, you know, I'd have a big problem approving it as is. So. Mr. Simonian? You know, I uh, distinctly remember this this hearing some months ago, and, and it, you know, we spent quite a bit of time um, addressing <clears throat> what we thought would be a good opportunity to create something special on, on campus. And we also brought up, and I think I brought up some points as well, that we typically um, don't get involved with a structure or a building that's not visible from the street. Um, and that this was a very, very unique, extremely unique scenario where you have a R1 zone property that's nestled within an existing neighborhood and at the same time you have a gymnasium that's being proposed. And so it, it doesn't happen every day. So it's very unique. and. I also remember distinctly conversations that it had gone to City Council. City Council had approved the project with, with the drawings that were presented to us at that point in time. And those drawings had a certain height, and they had a certain parking reduction, and they had certain layouts. <coughs> and so I think what we, my recollection of the hearing was the project is going to get built because 
the city council members have opined on it and have basically approved it. However, how can we make it more of a special icon, a special piece, when it's viewed from within the campus? Not so much as how it's viewed from 2nd Avenue, because <clears throat> I remember there were some issues from the second floor that you could see it. But overall, if the height was reduced several feet, um, it wasn't going to be as visible from 2nd Avenue. But my um, opinion as an architect was more, let's do something special with this site. Let's just create something special, and you could use it as an advantage, as some sort of a um, <clears throat> opportunity for everyone to get excited, board members, uh, parents, students, and it could also act as an amazing forum for future fundraising because it would be just such a piece of pride for, for these kids to play in and, and congregate in every day. But for various reasons that has not happened, and I too am very disappointed in that. But I have to go back to the initial background which has been approved by City Council and usually we don't as a board get involved with what is not visible from the street as much and most of my comments and I'm so disappointed that they weren't brought forward but were more to create something special internally for this and so there lies the conundrum of what to do with this project and um, we live in a very dense community, we live in a dense fabric, and throughout our neighborhood and throughout Southern California, there are schools nestled within existing neighborhoods. It's just the way it is. You buy a home and you know you're next to a school. You just have that knowledge and you have that fact presented to you and you usually buy it at a discount. And so it's not as though gymnasiums or schools that are within a community should not expand or should not fulfill what is appropriate for the school, but how do we all coexist and how, how should this occur um, in a responsible manner? And so my opinion doesn't change in that I don't think this is going to have a significant impact to Second Avenue. It might impact some homes, whether it's 8, whether it's 10, whether it's 12, but the number of kids that it's going to benefit certainly outweigh 10 or 12 homes. Now, they've reduced the height, and I'm so disappointed that the design was not changed, and I really think the board is missing the boat on this one. Uh, but um, I can't support a return for redesign or a complete um, denial of the project because of the fact that City Council has already approve the project in, in mostly in its entirety and, and it's not visible from the street. So those are my thoughts and comments. I agree with all the previous comments. Uh, it's the fact that this particular project is at the one end of the whole narrow lot obviously lends itself to be a, a more important piece of architecture and to look at what's been designed, it's as if it's been designed to accommodate the parking rather than trying to build the building. You've got a corridor between the existing buildings and the proposed building, which is a wasted five-foot corridor, which is going to be nothing. This, I know this could be designed better. I understand there are uh, monetary expenditures that can't be exceeded, but um, I can't support this project as shown. Do we have any other questions, comments? So do we want to vote on this? What are our options? I mean, we asked to bring it back, right? So, Stephanie, do we need to, yeah. what are our options on this? We've got two options to approve it, approve, or three options, approve it, approve it with the conditions, or deny it. It's, this is the second go round. I don't. Mm -hmm. Just go ahead. Since I, for me, the for the most part stayed the same. Just those they, they say what we said. For the condition. 
conditions that we picked up today. A second on that? A question? There is, um, can we approve the project with, oh. the, sorry, you might want to repeat that, I think. <laughs> um, I, I know exactly what happened. I, um, I'll be brief. Um, Chair? I will say since the conditions that we previously had have for the most part stayed the same, uh, and the late and the comments that we've said today are generally the same. Uh, I would like to make a motion to deny the project with those conditions. If I may ask, um, I don't know which way this is going to go, uh, but uh, what what we're hearing, if the project is not approved tonight, it's based on the architect the design architecture of the building rather than its position on the site. Is that do we have that right? No, I think it's both. Yeah. Everything. Everything. Okay. Thank you. Um, one um, one thought: if we we had stated some conditions earlier, and I and I wholeheartedly agree that those conditions were the right approach, and, and it hasn't changed. Um, is there a, an option to approve the project with those conditions and have staff work with them to fulfill those conditions? In which case, it's pretty specific what we're asking for. I think we asked that the first time around. Yeah, I, I, and that's just my thought. I'd like to have a discussion. I would, on I would agree with you in, in a project where maybe they've made some strides and maybe are, I don't want to use confused, but in a sense not clear on what the direction that they wanted from us was, um, then I would maybe let staff work with them and sort of clean it up and and progress the, the project along, but I think in this project it's it's clear that there's no sort of even half-hearted effort to try to get to any place closer to what we were thinking would be a better project. So I wouldn't want to burden staff to be able to burn all their hours with them where they could be helping people that really want to improve their project. So I, I would say Denari is probably where I would lean towards. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I second. Okay. Yes. And the end. I took all our mics. Oh. Uh, normally, these, these we in our staff reports. Uh, cover the three aspects of compatibility of site planning, uh, massing, and bank compatibility. I don't have in front of me the previous decision letter. Whether Roger, whether um, part of the reason I asked the question is because we're not really clear on what the site planning issues might be for that summary letter. So uh, before we vote, if we can have a little bit of an expansion on those issues, that would be helpful for us. I think a couple of the issues on the site plan were. Yes. A couple of the issues on the site planning were to look at the fact that they're putting a 30-foot building next to a classroom building with windows at five feet away from there and putting trees in there. And so we were asking them to consider pulling it away from that building so the natural sunlight that you were getting in those classrooms can sort of maintain. Um, the other idea was the landscaping, considering maybe a better alternative to the, to the planting that they were considering and as shown now, the landscaping in between that corridor, it's going to end up being a, a dead place. There's no, there's just a direct access into the gym. There's no opening on the sides where people might gather. It's just, it's a wasted space. So maybe that orientation, I realize that's why I made the comment that parking is dictating the location of that size of that okay. building. Okay, great. Thank you very much. So what I have is uh, look at the location of the building in relation to the existing building in order to maintain natural light to the existing building and consider alternative landscaping between the buildings. So that, that's helpful for us for our decision letter. Thank you. We're ready for a vote. Okay. Actually, um, 
that brings up a, a good point. Do the in the denial um, actually in the denial do we have condition? Yeah, I was mostly concerned about elucidating your reasoning, whether it's to be redesigned or to let if it gets appealed to let the council know your thoughts. Well. Well, we spent like two hours on this thing last time. I mean, it's, so, complete, it's a complete inappropriate design that has not, you know, when you look at the condition, we, we, we and then Chair Matt, it, it, it is a, re, it's a site issue, and it's a redesign. The redesign is, is not appropriate for what they want to achieve. There are better ways to make the structure still be, have a structure, but have a little bit more creativity and sensitivity to its own site and its surrounding neighborhood. It, it needs to, it's, it is designed. Yeah, and I think Forever you said that. Yeah. So, so um, why don't I go ahead and read the conditions that we're hearing have not been responded to uh, that we can include in the decision letter. Uh, consider design changes to the gymnasium which would allow the building to stand on its own and provide an architectural focal point for the campus. And I wouldn't even make that a consideration. It's a condition. It, it mm -hmm. needs to be better designed. Okay. Um, introduce natural light into the design of the building. Are we hearing the solar tubes are not Beyond sufficient? Beyond solar tubes. Beyond this solar point, tubes. Yeah. Okay. Um, if design remains in its current configuration, height of the building shall be a maximum of 32 feet. I think that they've responded to that. But, uh, but how do you achieve 32 feet? That doesn't mean that it's a 32-foot box all the way around. You can have one height point at 32 feet, but there needs to be something that's 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 works with the design. And still, okay, we're 32 feet over here, but that doesn't mean that it's, okay, create a box and it's all 32 feet. Okay. Um, consider installing the mechanical equipment within the storage room. I think that's been done. Uh, review the site planning of the building. I think we have your comments on that. Uh, relocate the bleachers to the opposite side of the court. Uh, I think they've they've done that. Actually, um, they they did not do that. But but they reconfigured the bleachers so to allow for the ent an entrance from the remainder of the school campus. But that's a minor issue. Though. Yeah, I, I, we're just when, wanting when, to clarify what's uh, what's for our decision letter. Chair, ma'am. And uh, then... I, I, forgive yeah. me, Stephanie. Please. Let's look at the plot plan or the building plan. Gymnasiums. You don't open the door and you're in the gymnasium. You need a narthex. You need you need a gathering place so that people get there. You you congregate. Okay, we're now here, and then you f and then you 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 go into the gymnasium. It's like a church sanctuary. It's a gathering place, especially a multi-court place where they're going to have they're going to have science projects. Or my daughter goes to school right up the street here that has a gymnasium. There's a place to gather. And then you go into the gymnasium. They need to so you don't open the door and boom, there you are in the gymnasium. There needs to be a better execution of the function of this facility to be able to work well. And it's a block. Of, it, 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 it's so um, we'll add a condition. Uh, that impacts architecture. How does it look? What yeah. how does it function? So we'll add a condition that I think wasn't included before to provide a gathering place and appropriate entry for the gymnasium. Th thank you. I think that that clarifies staff's question. Yes. One, one clarification. You know, uh, staff is asking you know for direction as far as site planning and massing. Yeah. Initially that's what the question was. Give some feedback. Um, the majority of, of our comments and what's being discussed is, is how the gym really relates to the existing building and how those entrances are. Um, it's not so much as the setback from the surrounding property lines. It's not so much as far as the parking layout. And so it's more specifically on, 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 on the gym itself. And I think that's important because there's just not too many ways to access this and make the parking work. And so the site plan, I think, works. The orientation works. The height works. The, the use works. The, it, it, it's been already worked out. It's been thought out. So it's not like it's starting from scratch and saying, okay, let's start with everything else. It's, let's concentrate on the building. 
and let, let's make that connection with the campus more of a cohesive and integrated integration and make it something special. Did that, you, Chair? Go ahead. I don't want to spend your money, but this building's going to exist for many, 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 many years, and its architecture impacts how it, how it works. So I'm parking right here. I come in with my kids. And boom, I open these double doors, and there I am, right in the basketball court. That's not good design, how it works. So with all due respect, height is, the height, 32 feet, great, but how is it working? How does it function? It's, and how does that ultimately make the structure successful? It appears to me, it was, okay, we need a mechanical room, we need boys and girls restroom, we need this, and they've just been plopped on to the outside and then you have doors that open up and you're into that gymnasium, on top of not being sensitive to where it sits. It can be done better. It can be done better. And I'm not the smartest cookie around. It can be done better. It's just not a good design. Siting, accessing, functionality, surrounding neighborhood, adjacency to the property line, it just struggles with it. And it hasn't changed from what we originally saw. I think we should move on. I think we should move on. And we've spent okay. enough time on this. I... Okay. Uh, roll call, Mr. Insua. No. I mean, uh... You mean yes? Yes. <laughs> Mr. Yu. Yes. Mr. Simonian. No. Miss Palmer. Yes. Okay. Motion for Donald three to one. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is one PDR. 2011-037-A, 1528 Marina Drive. Good evening, Madam Chair. Um, I'm going to begin my presentation by approaching the board. Uh, the next case before you is uh, to construct a one-story addition. Uh, it's going to be approximately... 499 square feet to an existing single family residence. The existing property is a through lot which fronts on Las Flores Drive and Marino Drive. Uh, the topography of the site has a subtle, well, it increases it, it slopes upwards from Moreno. It has a table where it's relatively flat in the middle, and then it ups, has the upslope again and it approaches Las Flores. Um, access is from. To the existing two car garages from Las Flores, it has a, a non conforming zero setback. There's no uh, modifications proposed to that garage. Uh, the property is approximately 200 linear feet from the Royal Street, I'm um, sorry, the Royal Historic District. Um, the scope of work of the project would not affect its potential contributor status as it's been reviewed with the uh, historic planner. Um, there are seven oak trees on or with within 20 feet of the site. Two of the trees have been identified as being affected. A tree report was included in this application, uh, which <laughs> had been submitted, uh, routed to you with your, uh, with your routed packets. Uh, the tree report's right here. The two trees that are identified are, one is they're at the property line and one is um, on the other site. Uh, the, the main mitigation measure uh, that was included in the, with the Arvis report was the addition to, to include a bridge foundation to preserve the mature roots of uh, these trees. Uh, the surrounding zones on this, on this property is R1R, and the zoning of this property is R1R also as well. Um, on the staff's analysis on the site planning, um, the setbacks are approximately five feet and approximately 50 feet away from this uh, southern property line, and it's 35 feet from the northern, oh, I'm sorry, it's going to be 35 feet and 53 feet from the east and west property line. So it's relatively far away. As proposed, it complies with required setbacks. Um, on the mass and scale, the existing shape, it does have an L shape. With the addition, it will provide a U shape uh, plan. The new floor area will be designed to be to complement the low profile of the existing home and to correspond with the existing neighborhood. Uh, the ridge line at the addition 
as shown right here, will be slightly higher than the existing portions over here. It's going to be approximately um, a foot and one inch higher, resulting in a total height of the home, as measured from the lowest, it would be 18 feet 5 inches. Um, while the addition is slightly higher than the existing house, staff recommends uh, instead of having a miniature gable, um, which may be viewed from Moreno, to clip it and uh, be consistent with the hip configuration from the uh, as the existing portion of the home. Um, staff feels the fenestration pattern uh, at the north elevation for the addition could be improved. Um, right now, they only have one window. Um, there is some, a potential opportunity, maybe at the corner, when you look at the floor plan, I can tell that this is going to be a bedroom. Um, there's potential opportunities for over here, but staff just feels the fenestration pattern from the north elevation, it could just be improved just slightly. Um, on a massive scale, the project uh, has incorporated designs that are consistent with the simple appearance of the ranch style and complements the style of the immediate neighborhood. Um, however, the photographs show uh, the existing windows as having block frame with, uh, with trim and sills. However, the, the, the designer or the architect has just drawn it without it. Um, staff just recommends that the windows at the addition were to match what's exhibited on the photographs. There is a window schedule that had been provided on the plans, and I do believe they say nail on. Um, staff just recommends that they use a block frame and replicate the trim and uh, the operation and the treatment. Um, overall, staff recommends approval of the project with the following additions. The windows of the addition to include block frame casements with external horizontal muttons with four light configuration, with flat wood casings, wooden sills to match the existing portion of the home. Two, the miniature gable at the addition should be clipped to further reduce the bulky appearance from Moreno Drive. Three, the addition uh, will be uh, within the root zone of the two trees uh, should provide a short, I'm sorry, a support bridge to preserve the root zone. Uh, four, the fenestration pattern on the north elevation <coughs> should be improved with additional windows to be consistent with all other elevations. Um, this concludes staff's uh, presentation. I'm available as well as the applicant and the homeowner. Any questions for staff? Yes. Mr. <coughs> What material are the existing windows? Uh, I believe from, I didn't step on the property, but when I did the site visit, they may be a steel casing. Uh, maybe we, we can confirm that with the applicant. Um, uh, maybe the homeowners as well. And, um, okay, so we'll, we'll double check that with the uh, applicant and, and the designer maybe. Um, as far as the roof is concerned, is the existing home's roof modified in any which way except for the connection of that new proposed wing? Not to staff's recollection. I mean, uh, it looks like this is, according to the roof plan, the only thing that might have been modified, well, maybe over here. As you can see, the double hips over here. Um, so I could say existing. Yeah. So they're each existing. Oh, right, right. I you may have asked if there had been any changes before. Changes oh, before. That's the way I interpret the question. I can be wrong. Is that what you meant? Yeah, I wasn't sure because it looked so Yeah, right. Non it doesn't look like an saying. original design or an well, original we can ask roof, so I was wondering if that's proposed or, no, or if we should just concentrate on that wing as far as the elevation is concerned. Is it existing? Else is existing. So, so far as you're concerned and what our belief is, is this is existing right now. Correct. Correct. But yes, so the only addition would be, I guess, from this elevation would be this right here. Just real quick. Uh, from this elevation, the east, it would be right here. Uh, the south elevation, it's, it's a little bit beyond there, so it would be this portion right here. It, it's behind that. And uh, on the north elevation, it would be this point forward. Uh, on the site plan, what what are the impacted trees again? I was not very clear on that. Right, we did have some questions when we um, that were addressed by the urban design. I'm sorry, the, the urban forester, and the applicant uh, did order. Actually, had a tree report provided, and they show the canopies over here. The two trees are. Um, one is right close to the property line, and the other one is right here. The, the report identifies them as the affected trees as five and six, 
Uh, and this is where they, 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 they are, the mitigation measures provide that raised bridge foundation to go over the large roots, mature roots. And it, uh, just for clarity purposes, this is going to be a raised floor, so there's going to be the crawl space underneath it, and the idea is the footings are somehow going to miss the root system? Yes. Uh, per the section drawing that has been dr provided with the, the engineer of this tree report, uh, I believe you guys got a copy, but if not, what he's drawing here with this section, show it right here, I think. There's SR1. He's showing right there that you would have it span across. Oh, I see. He's cantilevering it. Yes. yes. Yes, he does. Root system. Still not showing how this. Some, some, one way or another, wow, the footing <laughs> needs to go inside the earth. And unless he has an. Uh, I don't know. Looks like the whole thing would need to be cantilevered because the drip lines mm -hmm. cover the entire roof. He's so we'll ask the designer on that, I think. She's, a, she's an arborist. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think it's, it's got a stand. Oh, what is the roof it's material that's proposed? Oh. Is there a material board? Um, it might be it's hidden it's under all that. <laughs> yes. But the, the plan is calling out to be ha asphalt shingles. To match existing. That's correct. Okay. Yeah, but so what is, what is this distance here? Yeah. Because the drip line's over the whole roof. Yeah. Yeah, but he's just talking about where the roots go through the foundation. So they'll just be like a plate, basically. Yeah, but they're they're asking for 12 foot length, though. Huh? This can actually have that stuff. It's probably in between the roots. Like a pile? Yeah. You'd have like It'd a bunch like of a case on system exactly. in a way. Yeah. Oh, so. That's what you normally do. Any other questions? Staff. Okay, I have two speaker cards. Uh, Lunas, Lunas, excuse me, Louis Lucero. If you just give your name and address, please. Hi, good evening. My name is Louis Lucero, 10929 Mansell, Lennox. Um, I have some engineering staff. Yeah, which yeah, is that's what we were just looking at. Looking at yeah. Right. Which we're gonna have a footing here and a footing here, and I believe we're gonna have a footing here. So, I'm sorry, a footing here, mm -hmm. and we're gonna have another footing, uh, another I believe like a steel beam here, as like this. Yeah. So what's this depth here? That. Or, let me see. I'm sorry. Excuse me. From the edge of building to where you can have your actual footing. For this one, I believe is like 18 like around. It's four feet. What is four feet? It's four feet. Span or? Yeah, the span. From here to here, we're gonna have a footing. Oh, okay. The the the, the footing yeah. length is four feet. Yeah, the footing is actually length like four feet, and it's the top out here, and then that's where we're gonna have the, like like a pad, and then we're gonna have a beam going. Yeah, across the beam it. coming across. Yeah, because the root comes underneath. And here. then this footing is. It's another that comes across this. We know with this. Okay. I don't understand it. <laughs> Doesn't the okay. span say it's going to be 12 feet? Yeah, but how f deep is this going to go? I mean... Oh, I see. You're talking about the footing, how deep... I mean, it's made out of wood. You can't go more than, like, three, four feet without, you know, you put a steel floor joist in there. I mean... And so what if you go three, four feet? So what? You're in here. Are the roots significantly different from here to here? Uh, is the engineer here? No, he's not. But yes, the roots are significantly different because we were there on site. Do you think he means by having a footing here and a footing here, mm -hmm. and then you span a beam across it, which is this it's beam, be a steel and beam. then you hang these joists from this beam with hangers, and so this becomes a structural beam, and, and it's going to be a lot bigger than the way it's drawn wow. to, to take the weight of that home. But that's the only way this could work. Yeah, I guess you're right. It's yeah. like on stilts. Yeah. Like a pile system. But that, does, it, that doesn't say it's a steel beam. Yeah, it's, it's probably going to be a, end up with a concrete grade beam. Yeah. So it's basically like having a house in Malibu with a view, and you put your big glass open window here, right. except it's in the crawl space. Right. right. That's what it's doing. It's an expensive addition wow. you have okay. here. Okay. okay, continue. That, that sounds good. And pretty much, uh, like the staff recommended, we're going to go ahead and, and change the roof. And, and the windows are... Uh, like staff uh, 
uh, commented to you, all the windows are going to be exactly the same. Pretty much if you have any further questions, I'm open okay. for questions. Another um, question? Yes. yes. Are, what, what material are the existing windows? I believe uh, steel casing. They're metal windows? Yeah, metal windows. They're not wood. Oh, some, some of the pictures show wood. I, I, actually, I think they're wood. I'm sorry. They are wood. Wood. Yeah, they're wood. And uh, new windows that you're providing? Exactly the same. You can as match the it. Yeah, we're going to match everything from the existing is going to be matched to the new. And, and there were some comments about the wood sills, which is the bottom portion of the window, okay. and then the, the surrounds of the window matching the existing as Everything well. is exactly going to be the same okay. so to keep the consistency, the consistency from the existing to the new. And um, <clears throat> looking at the Moreno elevation, the picture, there's some tile work. Is that tile work around the existing window? Right here? Are those tiles? I around? believe not. Those are, I believe, a smaller window. I see. Oh, they're glass blocks? Yeah, I believe so. Was there a reason you didn't put any larger window in that bedroom for the discussion with staff about that? Yeah, that would be nice. Uh, we kept it minimum since we have the, the French doors on the other side of the, of, the, of the room. We kind of felt that we didn't have to put the other window, but if you recommend us to... No, I just wonder why you hadn't. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. Um... The notch that you have on the existing to the new, sure. That's, that's, is that the condensing unit for the for your HVAC system? Yes. It just seems a little peculiar that we're sort of adjusting our building envelope to to go around something that's so easily sure. moved, and you know, and especially if you could just. You know, put it in the back somewhere. <laughs> then, no, sure, I understand. You know, and, um, and we did that so the the owner could less expenditure for him to do that. I mean, that costs more than moving your condensing unit to move your wall around it. And, the wall around. Yeah, I would consider. Okay. Okay, that's. Thank you. Timothy Dejarnet. Hello, I'm uh, Timothy DeJarnette, and I live, I'm the homeowner at 1528 Moreno Drive. And uh, I would uh, <clears throat> encourage you to uh, accept the, the recommendation here. Um, I know that there's concerns that were mentioned on the roots. I did work with uh, Craig Crotty. Um, obviously, the one of the reasons uh, in that area of Glendale it's so beautiful is because of the trees. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm confident based upon uh, working with him and the designs. We already uh, looked at some of the routes to determine how we could bridge over those routes and not impact them. Um, in terms of the one of the concerns that you mentioned regarding the lack of windows, it's actually uh, going to be a family room, not a bedroom. And the lack of windows on that side was actually for a little more privacy in terms of the neighbor. Okay? Uh, but if there are concerns about that, I mean, I'm open to suggestions. But um, questions? or Anybody have any questions? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. No more questions. I'm going to close the public session. Mr. Simonian. I, it takes a little while to get your arms around the drawings just because of the, the, the detail in the drawings aren't as specific. So uh, I appreciate all the conversation that took place because I think it really answered some of my questions. The window should match the existing. The, the window trim and the window sills should match the existing. Uh, the roof material should match the existing. Um, in so far as your um, bridging technique that's that's proposed from the arborist, or is that from the arborist? Is this from an engineer? From an engineer. Yeah. I would um, caution you and, and to take a look at that. Make sure that that's achievable. Make sure that that's within your budget. And make sure that's that's working before you proceed with your work and drawings. Because the worst thing you want to do is get your 
construction documents and then find out that you have some uh, feasibility issues, practical issues with getting it done. It is a, uh, so there's something uh, for you to consider. In so far as uh, your elevations are concerned, I uh, do agree uh, with staff in in um, that might be necessary to provide some articulation there, but I do appreciate you pointing out that you didn't provide the window there because of your neighbor. But the roof certainly needs to be assessed, and I, and I think the designer already mentioned the fact that that's going to be worked out, and I, and I think that will add quite a bit because it does look awkward the way it's put together. So, uh, in conclusion, it, it's it's a modest addition, and I and I support it with those conditions. Mr. Yu? Uh, I concur. I think the with sort of the existing oak trees not being there, I think this is sort of the the right location for your addition. You create a nice little courtyard. You know, you have an area where three sides of your house can come into. It makes perfect sense. Um, it's basically matching the existing sort of what's going on in the house. You know, the pictures, I think, you know, it's a great site. It's a great, you know, front of the heart of the house. Um, and I, I'm, I'm, I think I, w I would be willing to approve it, you know, with some of the things that we, we can discuss. But I would just, as a homeowner, and I would just say that consider a few things. Um, Definitely the cost of what you're doing with the, the footing. It's going to be it's going to be more than you know what you anticipating what you think. It's going to create a, an area where your house on the flooring of it, it's going to feel a little bouncy as well because you don't have the support of the footing that's underneath it. So to keep that in mind. Um, any kind of settling and everything is going to be magnified because you're counting on these two footing pieces to hold up that portion of the house. More cracking and the, all those things. Um, the location of Sort of notching around this condensing unit, you need to reconsider. That doesn't, you know, there's a certain thing of a hierarchy between what should be moving, what should not be moved, and that just doesn't jive. And so consider that. Look at that. Um, and you know, the drawings themselves, they're they're decent. They're there, but it, you know, they're they're sort of lacking a lot of things in sort of the way the corners. Are. But the pictures, you know, give it a. I guess they do they do justice to your house, and so I think that that gives us a better picture of it um, and so I'm okay with it I'm going to approve it as is or I'm going to agree to it. It's just I would say consider those things because this is your house and it's a beautiful house, and so you don't want to put something there that's going to you're going to have to live there and you're going to it's going to impact how you how you see the house so just keep that in mind um, so I think that's all I have yes, sir. Um, I could. I'm supporting the project with the uh, comments mentioned by my colleagues. Um, I agree with Mr. Yu. A little bit of tweaking here and there will ultimately get you a better project. But in its totality, I, I would support this project. I agree with the project, but I have a concern with the oak tree, especially the one that's closest. Uh, we talk about the root system, but I don't know what the branching structure is because I've worked with numerous houses where 20 years from now that branching structure has come down and the height may be a situation where we have to cut the tree down or cut a huge limb off and that creates an imbalance with the trees. So depending on the height and the location to the uh, branching structure, I would really want them to look closely at that because it could be a, a problem down the road. So if we condition that the urban forester reviews the branches uh, and the proximity of the branches to the proposed addition. And the potential of those branches dropping with age. And potential of uh, the branches dropping and what trimming may be required. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? I would just add that I agree that maybe a high window on that side also makes a lot of sense. And I think that they'll like it because you're looking into a canopy of the tree. I mean, how beautiful is that, you know? So I think that's going to be very nice there. And that's the north, yeah, if they want north side or east side? Um, north. 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 Okay, thank you. And the east elevation, too, that window is small. You, you could certainly make it bigger. Right? You'll get that much I think that'd more be nice, light. yeah. 
the idea is to have an indoor outdoor integration with this courtyard. Um, the, the, the drawings and the level of detail in the drawings are more of what a draftsman would provide you with. So you need to really think about these details because you'll get such a better product. So you need to think about indoor outdoor integration. You need to think about how and your steps are going to integrate between this what you're adding on to in your courtyard. You need to think about views. You need to think about how this is going to add to your home. So years later when you go to sell it, it won't look like an add-on or a bolt-on. And so those are all things that an architect comes up with as an integration where where you now, it's upon you to, to work these things out. Do we have a motion? No. I uh, moved to uh, approve the uh, project with, with the conditions as stated. Do we want to re read those conditions? Uh, yeah, um, Mr. Joe is going to begin reading back the conditions and we'll help him if we need to. Sure. The considerations I heard um, was to consider building in line uh, for the addition where the, the, where the, the condenser does not shape how the addition is going to form. So maybe build in line so that the condenser is not f shaping the home. That's a recommendation. It's up to them. Okay. I, I can keep that as a consideration. Um, the other uh, condition that the urban forester should observe the, I guess, trees numbers uh, on the report five and six of the existing root system and um, the potential of um, larger branches uh, when it matures. Sagging. But sagging, yeah. yes. yes. And uh, that's a condition, not a. That's correct, a condition. And the last, it may be a consideration, I, I may be wrong, but consider a larger window on the east elevation. I mean, if they're going to be, if he's, what he's drawing here is a pair of casements, should it be elongated, maybe wider, or should we have a pair, or, you know, is there a, a recommendation from the board of what type of windows if he could consider or anything like that? It's really up to, I think, it's the designer. And the, the designer. Right. But there's an opportunity to better utilize that, got it, that view. Right. And then um, the conditions that were in the report. Um, um, there's one more, I think. Mr. Yu suggested a possible north facade high ribbon window. Correct. Correct. Can okay, it. we can modify staff's condition number. Uh, number four. Number four, that's correct, to have a higher ribbon window. What about the roof condition? Yeah, that, that's yeah there are three conditions in the staff report um, that address some of the concerns that you mentioned. Um, condition two in the staff report, the miniature gable at the addition should be clipped to further reduce a bulky appearance from Moreno Drive. I think that was the condition the uh, designer and owner agreed to. Um, a condition one, the windows at the addition are to include block frame casements with external muttons, flatwood casings and sills to match the existing portions of the home. We heard that you'd also like to add uh, the roofing material and exterior finishes should also match the existing, uh, the existing building. And then uh, what's uh, shown as condition number three, what we heard is a little bit of a modification from that, so I'll read what we have. Uh, the addition will be within the root zone of two of the oak trees. In order to preserve the large roots, a support bridge structure will be required. What we also heard to add to that is that the um, applicant should make certain that that bridge structure is practical and that that will be included in the project because it is of paramount importance. So if that language expresses what you've asked for, then you can go ahead and vote. I think we need a second. I second. Okay, so I have a motion by Board Member Simonian and a second by Board Member Yu. This will be roll call. Uh, board Member Insua? Yes. Board Member Yu? Yes. Board Member Simonian? Yes. Madam Chair Palmer? Yes. It's a 4-0 vote to, to approve the application. Thank you.
Your next project is 1 PDR 2011-051-A 4815 Cloudsdale Avenue. Have a staff report on that. That's good. Good evening. This is 1-051-A 4815 Gabe, is your mic on? Put on the mic. <laughs> Welcome back. Thank, thank you. Again, one more time. This is case number 1-PDR-2011-051-A, located at 4815 Cloudsdale Avenue. Uh, this is a first-time submittal for final review. The proposal is for an addition of 252 square foot first floor and a 460 square foot second story addition to a 1,280 1, square foot residence. The total habitable floor area will be 1,992 square feet. That's the first part of this request. The second part is that the homeowners are requesting to include the legalization of vinyl windows at the existing residence, most noticeably in the photographs, which I will pass through right now. Thank you, Mr. Smart. Um, an application for a standards variance was approved on August 25th, 2011 to allow the construction of the second story addition as well as the first sto uh, floor addition, if I may, walk the board uh, walk the board through the plans here that were submitted. Um, the variance was to approve the continuation of the building wall along this side of the property. Um, the overall height of the building will increase to 20 three feet, um, and let me just scribble up through my notes here. Overall, given the, the small size and the location of the addition, it appears to be appropriate for the project site. The basic site plan, parking access, and landscaping remain unchanged. However, staff would recommend drop tolerant landscaping uh, drop tolerant landscaping plan to be submitted to complement the new construction. The overall design is appropriate and fits well into the neighborhood context. Um, as proposed, the two-story addition is at the rear. Oh, excuse me. Oh, okay. Thank you. Is well sited, well appropriate, well proportionate to the lot and its site context. The ranch style architecture of the addition is compatible with the neighborhood. Staff recommends approval with two conditions. The first condition is that a new landscape plan be provided uh, with the drought tolerant landscaping. And the second condition um, is to maintain the sill and trim at the existing window openings, provide or replace wood sill and trims where they were removed, and that any grids on these windows should be external. Um, the homeowners are in the audience along with the architect. The project architect is here. If you can answer any questions you may have also have. Um, before I conclude my presentation, the neighbor immediately adjacent to the north um, has submitted some communication to the board. He expresses his concerns regarding the window locations and the privacy to his backyard. And uh, that which window is he referring south to? South elevation. He's noting the south elevation and north elevation. So that would south. So be this location along with the, this, this location. And he's he's on the site plan. Um, he would be here. Sir. I see. This this is here. so. He's talking about this window here, right? Which is this window here? That. Yes, sir. South and north. Second proposed walls, south and north elevation views prevent appearance. Well, he's probably just south and to north. One. I think he meant same thing yes. applies to the other neighbor as well. Maybe he's this neighbor, right? Correct. He is that neighbor. And you're talking he's about this two-story. He's the two-story. He, he is the two-story. It's forty eight twenty one. Cloudsdale Avenue. That, that is that is that is his property. That's your. That's that's concludes my presentation. Any quick que more questions? Any questions? Okay, Thanks. I have um, 
several speaker cards. Martin Fenlon, Could you just give your name and address, please. Hello, my name is Martin Fenlon. My address is 1401 South Santa Fe Avenue, Suite 7, Los Angeles, California. I'm the architect for the project, and uh, just to kind of walk you through the um, the approach in, in doing this addition, it was it was fairly straightforward in that we wanted to Im minimize the visual impact and maximize the consistency of the architecture with the existing house. So in doing that, um, we concentrated the mass of the new addition, the two stories, which by necessity had to be. We concentrated the mass to the back of the house so that the visual impact you know, would be minimized and the consistency of the original house would kind of be maintained as it's it's appropriate and fitting in with the other houses in the neighborhood. So we kind of maintain that consistency. And then um, in doing the mass in the back, we, uh, we just uh, replicated the details of the house as best as possible. And it's a very kind of simple, straightforward ranch style house that's um, uh, very common for post-war architecture. So just the, the simple details of the hipped roof with the exposed rafters, uh, was was um, replicated, and then the windows, the sizing, and the spacing was also um, done to be consistent with the original. So in the end, the addition it, it echoes the um, original house and and uh, is is consistent with it, and then kind of is respectful to the neighborhood as best as possible. I have it. I have some clarification questions on the west elevation. You've got two windows, and on the floor plan, they're different sizes, and on the elevation, they're the same size. Okay, the west elevation is, um, let's see, yeah. Yeah, the, it, here. right. This one's bigger than that one, and when you look at the elevation, the same I think there was a, um, there must be an inconsistency in the schedule. In. Uh, the one on the right, when when you look at the elevation, the one on the right is part of the new addition. Okay, thanks. The one on the left is is an existing addition. So the idea is is to match that window because it's right next to it. So it, that'll be clarified. Um, I think uh, we missed that the uh, size was labeled incorrectly. Okay, and then on the south elevation, the floor plan has a door. And don't have. There's a door right here. Is that going to be? Okay. There's a door. That, uh, there will not be a door there anymore. It's into a utility area? Yeah. It, it, as it is now, there's a, um, it's kind of a utility closet. It, it's up high off the ground. It's just kind of a built out from the wall that houses. It's going to be like the elevation. Yeah, right. Okay. Okay, those are the only questions I have. Um, Mr. Simonia? Yeah, they're um, based on the, the letter from the neighbor. And this is the neighbor um, to the north. Uh, he's, I guess, uh, saying either eliminate window number 207, which is this window, to basically eliminate kind of using to a backyard and, and simply making 206 larger, or, or just simply moving this window up as more of a river window that we talked about on the last project. Yeah. I have, have you guys had any thoughts on that? Has that discussion occurred prior to this hearing? Yes. Um, yeah, I, Gabriel made me aware of the uh, the letter and the concern, and I think it's a fairly simple fix. Uh, the window could be more of a, a clear story type window, a higher window, uh, because the window facing west meets the egress requirement for the uh, for the bedroom. So this window, it can be it can be modified fairly easily to I think to make everyone happy. Okay. And I think there was a comment by staff about inter introducing more um, articulation into that two-story feature of perhaps, you know, maybe you could cantilever, let's say, the second story a little bit over the first, have some corbels, have some sort of an articulation so it's not just massing. Right, right. Uh, that, I think that could be handled with um, some detailing. Um, it's, as far as like cantilevering or, or stepping, staggering the wall, it's just not a possibility because um, we're we're kind of pushed against the setback, and, and, and it's barely enough room to make the the spaces the size that they need because it's such a tight footprint. 
So, so that kind of articulation would have to happen with some with something applied. How come you're restricted with your setback? Because it seems like you got plenty of setback. The south elevation is is five feet off the property line, and that's the current setback. And and and. I guess the more of the importance is the north elevation because the driveway is there, so it's more visible from yeah. the street. So in other words, when you're driving down you know, the driveway or driving down the street, you're able to see this um, more, well, it's more visible than, than this from this side because of the way this structure is located. So the idea is this elevation, which is this elevation, you there is an opportunity to have some articulation and this elevation in this area to um, eliminate the bulky and the massing look of it and feel of it. Yeah, that that could be accomplished. Okay. Yeah, fairly easily. Any other comments? Is your floor to floor height or floor to your ceiling height, is it the same from first, first to second floor? Uh, I, I didn't see a dimension string on that, so... Yeah, yeah, they'll they'll both be just standard eight foot room heights. So okay. the um, I guess it wasn't labeled on there, but they are the same. Okay, same so height. right now the ceiling height and the lower from your floor to your ceiling is about eight feet, eight yeah. one and a half, eight two or whatever. Yeah, that's right. Comes out to yeah. Okay, so that would be the same. Okay. Other questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Brian Styles. Actually, I had a question, but I'll ask you. <laughs> no, my, I forgot. Hello, I'm Brian Stiles. I'm the homeowner at 4815. Um, I would like to ask you to, to please approve the, the project. Um, the main reason that we're wanting to do this is we have a new child that's come to live with us, my niece. We've gotten guardianship for her. And we've been living with, a, with four family members in one bathroom for a large number of years. We want to expand a little bit and not have that inconvenience anymore. Um, I had one question about the cantilevering that you were talking about. Um, would that be a cost issue if, if that was that was done? Would that increase the cost of the project a lot to, to add something like that? I wouldn't say a lot. No, not a lot. It's not cheaper. It's not cheaper, but it's not significantly more, but it'll really add a lot to your home. And, and it, the idea is we try to shy away from creating the kind of massing that you're proposing, mm -hmm. and so we're not singling you out. It, it, it's a very typical uh, condition that this board uh, puts on projects where they come with just a blank wall that's two stories high. When you say it's not cheaper, you mean it's $10,000? It's up to <laughs> you and your contractor to work out. Our job is to create... Know, how much? <laughs> our job is to try to create uh, okay. uh, the type of architecture that's within the city's guidelines. I, I would like to point out that there's a block wall on the neighbor's house, the one that's complaining about it. So, for for the for the window, I mean, we certainly have no problem with the window. I mean, you can ask your architect, but the way it's built, it's it's just readily done. You just extend out your second floor line a little bit further because you're not going to balloon frame the thing anyway, you know. So, okay. it, you could ask him. He know. He knows. <laughs> Did you have a question? Uh, yeah, I had a question. Between your neighbor and your north, the person, the house to the north of you, what is the grade difference there? Uh, from it looks like there's a little bit of step up as it goes. Is that is yeah, that right? Not, not very. There is a little bit of step up, but I don't think it's very <laughs> it's like large. Three feet or so. I think he knows more. He's been there longer. That's my neighbor to the south. He was going to talk next. Okay. It's like three feet. It's about three feet. Okay. Three feet. Is it four? Nine. 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 Actually, why don't why don't we get you to step up to the mic? <laughs> You want, unless you have, do you have any other questions? No, I think that's it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, Kevin Wilby. Maybe we'll ask him. My name My name's Kevin Wilby. I live at uh, 4811 Cloudsdale, which is immediately south of the residence in question. I'm filled with great ideas. I don't know how much of the night you have. Um, okay, basic, you have a few minutes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm here to support the project because... In our neighborhood, when you have more than a two-person family, you have a couple choices. You either do a second story, because the lots are very small, 
or you move to another neighborhood. And uh, it really improves our neighborhood to have houses that improve and are more, they, they're not mansions, they're not 5,000, 3,000 square feet, but we can get up to 2,000 and have an actual uh, environmentally conscious living space that you're not heating vast gymnasiums, you're just living in it. And so I'm on the south, which would be the upper right, this is my right hand, right hand corner on that uh, elevation view. Um, what it doesn't show is that because we're on quite an alluvial slope there, that really there's a lot of house below it on the right hand side. But who cares? It's just that's the nature of going up a hill. On the left-hand side, you wouldn't see that because there's already a, about a five-foot retaining wall there, and then there was a six-foot fence. So even though it's a massive face of stucco, it's, you know, it's the way it is. From the street, you won't really see it much because it's set back... It's set back from the uh, the existing house because the existing house I think has a two foot setback and it has to go back a yard beyond that. Um, from the north side that you were discussing and with the cantilever, for my own you know for what it's worth, it seems like a, a pointless expenditure because you really can't see that from the street. You can only see it when you're standing in front of their garage. Because just, just above there, there's a four-foot wall, then a two-story two two high gray stucco with a tiny little window in the bathroom there, which sounds imposing, but isn't. You know, it's just the way it is. So... Um, Can we wrap this up a little? Yeah. Okay, to wrap it up, what you're looking at from the front there is what's really going to be added to the neighborhood, which looks very nice. And if uh, you're looking for a way to divide, you're trying to avoid the El Monte effect is what I call it, the big stucco wall with a bunch of cheap windows in it. You throw in, a, I think it's called a water table, you know, like a little sill dividing the two structures, better than a cantilever. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, no more questions? Close the public session. Mr. Yu? Me to go again? Okay. I think I went first. I'll go. That's fine. Um, I have no major objections to the fact that it's a two-story house. It's sitting back a little bit in the back. Uh, the only thing that, that I keep coming back to is basically the house looks like it's got this the original house. Then you have a two-story sort of mass that gets attached to the back of it. And it's got a feel of sort of a duplex look to it. And it's... Um, I'm trying to see how we can sort of remedy and you know find the middle ground so that we can get this thing approved for you. Um, I guess, I mean, I know people are always like, well, you won't see it from the street, but it's it's still your house, and you want to make it the when you're doing a renovation to have sort of the highest value that it, it can have, and you know, a place that you that you call your your place. Um, so I'm not. I'm not totally opposed to the project, but you know those are some of the things that I'm thinking about. Um, what can we do to sort of minimize those parts, um, especially the southern elevation? Um, I, I don't know. Uh, we'll come back to me. <laughs> okay, Mr. Insua. Um, I want you to be approved. I want you to approve the not oh, spend money. Seven. How much? Um, I think I got myself in trouble about nine years ago for doing this. I'm going to do it again. It'll be, huh? Yeah, I'm going to be quick. I think it'll satisfy what we want with, with all due <laughs> I, I want to beg your forgiveness. I'm going to mark in the drawings, which we don't want to do, but I think it takes care of the problem because you should be approved. Quickly, boom. You have a roof element right here. I'll draw it over here. Just extend it all the way to here put a little thing here and then you continue your little collar right there done you come over to here what that does it extends the roof over there continues the angle right there oops I knew I should have used your red pen doesn't cost any money you just extend the collar it's already there it gives you a little covering over the door and you break up the two mass you can do the same thing around that side that's what you should do 
and I would support this project. Forgive me, I'll probably get a call. So. Any other? Oh, wait, I'm sorry, Mr. Simone. <laughs> <laughs> I also uh, think that the second story addition is done in a reasonable way. You know, it's step back, it steps in, which is nice. Um, I very much agree with Mr. Insuas. Um, suggestion insofar as how to break up the massing and I think it'll really help and it's not a big cost item um, and because the neighbor did write a letter and because the architect thinks it's not a big deal I would make it a condition to uh, eliminate window number uh, 207 as indicated on sheet A3 and simply make window number 206 bigger um, in which case you get all the light that you need and um, it doesn't really um, affect the overall uh, use uh, of the room. In fact, it might make it more of a usable room with the bed and the way it would be located. Besides that, I could uh, support the project. And um, what else did staff Can we just give them an option to put a high window if they want? Yeah, I think that's fine as well. Uh, a okay. clear story window would suffice just yeah, as well. I think well. an option for that, yeah. You know, if it's high enough, then you're not bothering them anyways, and you get your light. Be mindful of how you're going to place your bed, and, and that's very important how the bed fits in there because sometimes the windows really get in the way of the bed orientation. You have the closet on one side. You have the bathroom on the other side, the bathroom wall, but what, once you walk in, you're right into that area. So look at it and think about where you're going to put the headrest, the headboard of the bed, and, and that would maybe help you in locating that window. You might not think it's such a great idea to have the clear story, but I'm absolutely okay with a clear story window. Um, and so far as uh, staff's conditions, I, mean, I, I agree with condition number one, which is maintaining existing sill and trim all around existing window openings. Yeah, and I uh, agree with those conditions as well. I agree with the comments and Mr. Nsua's comments about breaking it up. Uh, I think the only comment I'd have in addition to that would be to remove that cypress tree in the front if you're facing the house on the left next to the telephone pole. It's not helping you at all. It's dating the house. And it's, I think it'd just be better off with a new landscape plan to eliminate that. We can't have cross communication because it's being recorded. So all four on the north side? No, there's just one right out by the telephone pole. Okay. Facing the house on the south side. On the south side, because there are four on the north side. I sure think they're on the neighbor's property. property. Yeah. But I'm, I'm just saying that one okay. takes away from the house. Great. And, and the chair, then, I'm sorry, was that a consideration or a condition? I would make it a condition. Condition. Want to read back the conditions? that we have in considerations? Yes, yes. I do have one question, though, um, if I may. Uh, it seems like the recommendation to extend the roof on the south and the north side was agreed to by other board members. I would like to point out that on the rear of the house, that would mean that there's only a small portion where that roof skirt doesn't exist, so are you suggesting to wrap that all around the new addition? It would, it would help. Back here? Right. Correct. Yeah, and it'll give the windows some protection as well. Okay, so uh, that uh, additional roof would wrap around uh, the entire new addition between, obviously, between the first and second floor. Good call. Okay, and then the, the second condition that I have is to eliminate window 207 or add a clear story window. Um, on the north facade. On the north facade, correct. And to make window t number 206 larger, if, 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 if required. If required, if, if, nece if necessary. Okay. I have a condition also to remove the cypress front yard one cypress the very first on the south side on the, the on the south side okay and the two conditions that staff recommended is that also included in two okay
Do we have a motion then? Do we, oh, I move uh, to approve the project with those conditions. Do we have a second? I'll oh, second. Okay, this will be roll call. Mr. Simone? Yes. Mr. Yu? Yes. Mr. Insua? Yes. Madam Chair Palmer? Yes. Motion carries 4 nothing. Thank you. Thank Next you. case, our final case on the agenda is 1 PDR 2011-5058-A, 2501 Hermosito Drive. Roger, you're on. It's okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, good evening again, Ms. Uh, Palmer and members of the Design Review Board. The last item before you is case number 2011. Let me take a break and I'll put the plans. Case number 2011 Sorry about that. Okay. Um, the last item is 2011-058, a review of an approximately 1,000 square foot uh, addition to an existing single family house at 2501 Hermosita Drive. Uh, before I go any farther, the plans are in back of you. Um, I'll also, the applicant just submitted um, some landscape plans for, for your review. I'll pass that around. Or I can post it if you'd like. Better. Why don't you post. put it on the board? And also, you all um, should have received a letter from the Verdugo Woodlands West Homeowners Association on your tables. The project was initially um, proposed um, and approved by the Design Review Board in our, on March 23rd of 2006. The building permits for the project were issued and most of the addition and the exterior work have been completed. Building permits for the work have expired and the project requires re-approval from the Design Review Board as well as new building permits. The existing residence is located in the front third of the lot, approximately 200 square feet, and a new two-car garage is being added to the first floor of the residence, and a new 850 square foot second story uh, is being added. Uh, as previously mentioned, the addition and, the, and much of the exterior work have been complete. Um, it, interior work to the residence as well as hard and softscape uh, on the site have not been completed. A, stamp, a stamped concrete driveway is proposed um, leading from the street to the garage. Staff suggests that the board consider a condition, condition requiring uh, that the, the new driveway ha include some, uh, in, uh, some pervious surface area. Oak trees are located on the site as well as within 20 feet of the site. Mitigation measures uh, for these trees uh, will need to be included on the proposed plans as these measures were included on the previous uh, plans and uh, staff actually inadvertently omitted this condition of approval and request the board add this. Uh, I can pass around the previous mitigation measures for the, the project if you'd like. Mr. Smolian. Initial uh, landscape plans for the site were sparse in it and proposed camellia in various areas of the front yard. Uh, given that the on-site landscaping is absent or not well taken care of, staff recommends that landscape plans be submitted which are appropriate to the sloped topography of the site, the existing oak trees, the style of the house, um, are drought tolerant and consistent with the surrounding neighborhood standards. And uh, they have submitted uh, something just uh, this this evening. I have not taken uh, a great look at it, though. Do you yes. have the property pictures? Oh, I do. I'm sorry. Yeah. And the material uh, cut out sheet. I 
picture of the house is on the in the front. Thank you. And actually, let me um, pass around the perspective as the next thing I'm going to add is, as I discussed in the um, in the uh, report, the proposed plans depicted a, a grand uh, entry stair to replace the current brick stairs leading to the front entrance of the residence. Uh, this hasn't changed from the 2006 proposal. Uh, however, staff um, thought that that element of the of the project, which hasn't been built yet, but is proposed on the plans, um, was fairly was fairly bulky, particularly when you compare it to the house and uh, its location in the neighborhood. Uh, staff initiated a conversation with the applicant to encourage them to maintain the existing uh, stair entry stair walk, uh, as shown in the pictures. Yeah. Uh, as these stairs are modest and attractive and in uh, fairly good repair. Uh, the applicant concurred with the suggestion and will keep the entry st uh, stairs uh, as shown on the photographs. The mass and scale of the residence is consistent with the surrounding neighborhood and again maintaining those, those existing uh, entry stairs uh, which are modest in scale is appropriate for the residents. The design and detailing of the project reflects the uh, Spanish, uh, contemporary Spanish aesthetic. There are many, or a number of different uh, style windows on the on the home, and uh, while these aren't readily visible, uh, the board should consider whether all the windows in the residence should be a consistent material. That concludes my presentation. Uh, there were four considerations, uh, conditions, uh, also including the, not including the mitigation measure that I, we'd like to recommend you also including as a condition of approval. The question? Sure. Insofar as the remainder of the windows comment, mm -hmm to match what is, I guess, the new windows. W how many windows is that going to impact, and which windows are we talking about that staff is recommending uh, removing or replacing? Um, I don't know the exact number. Uh, I, can, I can go up to the, um, the plans and give you a pretty good estimate. OK. I would assume all everything new was per the material cutout sheet, which are the pele windows? Uh, correct. In, in all honesty, um, there was no uh, initial or final DRB inspection on the project. Um, so I, I can't tell you that for sure, but um, I can tell you, and they look relatively consistent. So uh, let, me, let me count the number of windows. Maybe 11 windows and it's like three or four doors. And how many of those 11 are facing the street? There are three windows facing the street and one French door. Okay. And I think actually, my, if my memory is correct, these are uh, the original, I think there were wood windows. There are windows in the back here that have been altered and and are a different material. On we could ask the applicant about yeah. those. Okay. okay. And so as far as the general history is concerned, it got DRB approval, but it didn't get final DRB um, sign off back in 2006. Uh, building permits were issued, building work commenced, the building work uh, occurred of course around and the exterior was built. The interior was not finished, apparently, and a final sign-off from Building and Safety and a Certificate of Occupancy for the addition was never issued, so those permits expired? Yeah, the permits expired at some point. I don't, I don't know the exact date. Um, and as you can see from the photos, most of the exterior work is done. Um, but if you, if, you, if you look inside, um, 
lots of work remains. And on the on the on the outside, um, the driveway hasn't hasn't been done, and this whole entry element um, not been hasn't That's hasn't been, been done. done. And is it the same owner or different owners? Different owners. And so the first step is to obtain design review board approval. Correct. And then they're going to resubmit the building and safety drawings in the building and safety for the new codes to get a new permit. Is that the idea? Well, the, yeah, they'll need to get a new building permit because all the permits have expired. Okay. Yeah. And then to finalize all their inspections and so forth. Right. They, okay. they will need to go through the whole the, the process and uh, including... Uh, final inspection. Have you, um, DRB. how close, insofar as the shaded area is concerned, which is the addition, and, and, I'm sorry, uh, insofar, oh, right. yeah, exactly, this area, oh, I'm, yeah, yeah the shaded area, <laughs> has staff taken a closer look of how closely what's built resembles these drawings? Is, is, is that an accurate depiction of, of, of the elevations in the facades? I think it's a relatively accurate yes. Um, I went out to the site maybe three weeks ago, a month ago, um, not specifically to look at the plans and to look at what was out there, but just to look at the site in general and the neighborhood and um, see if anything sort of stepped out at me as being I looked at it. It's anything we need plans. to be aware of. Any other questions? So we don't know how how close they got to or what phase they were in the sign off or inspections. I'm sorry, we, what phase they were in? No, how far they were along with the inspections of this of the original. Yeah, offhand, no. Okay. You know the the exterior of the actual house is complete is almost complete if not complete. The interior work. Um, I, I peered in the f front entry, and it looked basically like a shell. What What is um, the Verdugo Woodlands West Homeowners Association's letter regarding the entryway where it seems they, they are in support of no. the renderings, or is it no. the opposite? They support it's the opposite. Because it's, it's written in a... It's very confusing the way it's... Oh, I'm sorry. I... Um, I spoke with uh, Ms. Stanley on the phone today, and um, she um, she made it clear that um, the entryway, as it exists now, is is the their desire. preference. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, please know that we would not support the grand entryway, okay. um, which apparently staff has convinced the applicant not to pursue. Okay. So. okay. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. I have one speaker card, Machiko Gingery. Did I say that correctly? Give us your name and address, please. Uh, my name is Michiko Gingari. I'm a property owner of a new uh, 2501 property. Yeah. You're at 2511. <laughs> yeah, no, no. 2501 is a new prop owner. Yeah. That's okay. Fine. And uh, I just like to collect the, my property line. That's why the complaints about it. Because the previous owner built a concrete wall which is crouching to my property. And uh, this time, new owner is going to uh, build new house. I like to collect the my property line and uh, do something about uh, not much crouching but uh, it's still crouching uh, I like to correct that okay. and uh, I have a little hearing problem so if details my daughter Maya Mari will explain you okay I have a question uh, regarding the wall that's a, the stacked stone wall that's across the front. Uh, these aren't the property owners of 
the project. Oh. They're to the north. Right. Sorry. To clarify. That's okay. <laughs> we're at 2511, the property just to the north. Okay. Okay. I, I can answer that question. The the plans show that that stack stone wall that's existing there now uh, will be removed. Do we know what's going to replace it? Yeah, uh, the plans just so show it being removed. Are, are we referring a, about the same wall that the speakers? No, this is the one in no, front. This it's is, a retaining oh, wall. Oh, so if yeah. we remove it, we why don't why don't we do this? Why don't we Let's continue with? The adjacent neighbors and the applicants okay. who need to fill out a speaker card. Can. That's where I was confused. Okay. Did you have anything else to comment on? I have a question for them, actually. Okay. How far is it over? I can show you. I have a map. Just give me a number. Um, it's a maybe. I mean, there, there's a the house is within probably four or five feet of the property line, and then there's a wall that was built before the by the previous owner of the home. Um, which is actually maybe a foot or two over on our side. A foot or two. Okay. Yeah. And what kind of wall is it? It is a cinder block wall. Do you know if it's a retaining wall? It is a retaining wall. Okay. But it's, um, it kind of joins into a wall that they built behind their house. To, it continues over When they did a big cut-in, they joined a very mm -hmm. small wall to a large wall that they built behind their I house. Understand. And then was okay, this, wall. is this the wall that was originally... Um, part of the 2006 uh, approval and drawings? Did no, it occur about I the same time? I believe that the property owner knew that, that it was encroaching and he had agreed to remedy it, but didn't. Got it. Oh, okay. But the actual and also, was there was a else. grant of land to that property at 15 feet almost That's 50 right. years ago. And so we had already granted 15 feet of land to that property many, many years prior. Are there surveys? Yeah, I have maps here. If you'd Good like. question. So the actual wall that's encroaching onto your property was it built by this person that was doing the 2006 one? No, it was built prior. To prior. That. Okay. Prior. When to do that. you think it was built? At some when? Do you know when that wall? Do you know when the wall was built? Uh, about ten years ago. Ten years ago. Ten years ago. And do you know if the, any building permits were issued for that wall? We don't know. And, and uh, approximately how much dirt is being this supported? This lady who owned the house uh, built uh, uh, this concrete wall. It's a block wall okay. uh, without uh, any uh, concern to me. It's uh, talking to me or anything. She just built it. I see. Okay. I have okay. no other questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for taking the time to come over here. Thank you. Thank you. This is Tim Roth, Rita. Wow. Roth. Roth. Yes. Hi, I'm Tim Roth at uh, 2501 Hermosita. I'm the homeowner and trying to finish this project out. So I'm here to a answer any questions and Hopefully it gets approved and we can move along with that. So maybe you can answer the question on the wall that I was asking. I, I, I would certainly address it, and I would like to be a good neighbor to these people. I, I didn't know there was an encroachment. I know we're beyond the uh, statute of limitations on it. I know that it's uh, – I'm not sure if the wall would require permits. I don't know how high it is. I haven't really looked at it. And, um, you know, if it's something that we're encroaching on their land, of course I'd want to give it back to them. Um, but again, like um, I, I, if it was done by the previous owners and, and, and the, the owners who I think one of them might, may have passed away, who was deathly ill, um, th that would have been dealt with on the uh, on some kind of quiet title action when they, they acquired it. And they have, um, I'm sure they had a title report that had some kind of boundary um, delineation on that. So. To put the burden on me, just on, on here, I don't think it's appropriate. This is more of a design review. If she wants to to address a, a quiet title action on it, I'd be happy to, to do that. But I, I would be, you know, I'll put on record that if, if I am encroaching on her land, and I would I'd remedy it. I wouldn't want to take anything from me. It wouldn't be belong, you know, belonging to me, and I certainly wouldn't want to take it from them. So that's, you know, as far as that goes, this isn't what I think. That this meeting is about, but there's remedies for that, and this is not really it. But 
I'm not really used to the this type of setting. It's my first involvement with Glendale, so what, I'm happy, I'm happy to and Glendale. open for any, any discussion. What is your profession? Um, I do real estate. I, I do development. I'm a contractor, but um, I work in you know, a lot of different cities and you know different backgrounds and different uh, professions. But um, I asked because you were so knowledgeable about about the rules. That's why I asked. Yeah, I, I do litigation support and, and boundary line disputes and title issues. Right up your alley. Very much. <laughs> but I also, you know, I, I would defend them if I thought someone certainly wouldn't stand here and want to take something that wasn't mine. Um, I have some questions. I just want to finish oh, it because my query, my question was about the front wall. Plan, I, I plan on getting a, a retaining wall there and finish off with a nice stone. That would be a con, um, um, complimentary to the, the house itself. Okay. So. And what about the that little balcony area in the front where you were going to put the uh, curved area of the entry across where the French doors are? I'm actually in, a, in, a, in agreement with you and, and the everybody involved. I didn't plan on putting that grand entry. I just It was consistent with what was but approved. I guess before. what I'm asking is, are you going to expand the existing little balcony area that's out there? Um, I plan on addressing the balcony. I, I don't think I plan on expanding it. So um, that really depends on what they accept on the landscaping plan. I, I want you know. I'm, I definitely am, am want to provide, you know, put something there that's consistent with the neighborhood and something that will okay. be attractive to whoever you know permanently stays in the house. Okay. Mr. Simonian, hey, um, similar to some of the questions that I was asking staff, um, can you recap as far as what portion of the building and safety construction inspections were completed? the best of your knowledge? The best of my knowledge. They, they, they approved the, uh, like the roof and the outside and didn't get um, the, from what I can tell, they didn't get the rough framing passed. And there was a lot of turmoil with the, with the owners and then they ran into health problems. So um, from what I can tell is they didn't get the, you know, a lot of the rough uh, utilities or electrical plumbing so forth passed on there, but I don't think I don't see I don't think it's a big issue. I think the biggest issue is with, with the outside. And has um, has the interior been covered with drywall? No. So you have uh, open studs on the interior as far as the addition is concerned. Yes. And um, and the windows that have been located and fixed to the building and the shaded portion, which is the addition. Are those windows the wood-clad windows that are indicated in your material sheet? In the addition? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think they're, they're custom wood, kind of metal-clad. The wood on the inside and the metal-clad on the outside? Right. Okay. That's what it's right. And um, the existing windows that face the street, um, the four or five windows, what, what kind of windows are those? Those are the, the original windows. We, we planned on switching those out, consistent with the newer ones. So I, I had no no plans of keeping the older windows. They're the old wood windows. Yeah, I, I think it would. I, I I agree. I don't think it's it'd be a really eclectic to keep the old ones with the new. And um, in so far as uh, building inspections are concerned, when was the last uh, inspection that was signed off by the city? I know. You just handed something here, and it seems as though there was something in March of 2009, city attorney request, March 2009, permit explain, framing. So January 10 of 2011, the framing inspection, was that, what, what was that about? Do you have any history on that? We talked to them. I, I think that they, were, they, they weren't complying completely with the inspectors in the city. So I think there was a lot of going back and forth, and there was issues with the owners at the time. They being the previous the, owners? Yeah, previous owners. When did you purchase the home? Um, roughly about nine, ten months ago. I understand. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank no. you. Thank you. Right. Closed public session. Mr. Insua. Okay. I'll be quick. Uh, I think I would support this project, especially with the... Uh, from what I've heard with the way that the new owner is 
proposing to take this project forward and I especially would support the staff comments also supported by the owner to maintain the uh, more modest entry and then uh, and then the driveway formula material and all that other stuff the, the new owner is supporting it so I can support this project Mr. Simonian um, <clears throat> As presented and as was previously approved, uh, the design, I think, works well and is integrated into the neighborhood. So I think it's, it's well thought out and, and well orchestrated. Uh, I'm glad that in this specific situation, what was built actually matched pretty much what was approved because that's usually not the case in these kind of scenarios. We usually end up with something wildly different. So that's good news. Uh, I'm also relieved, and it's great for you, that the interior is open. That's going to make your inspections go that much easier, and it's just going to make it a whole lot better. Uh, and so far as the conditions, as, con uh, as stated by staff, I'm in agreement in those. Um, I wouldn't go ahead and replace all the windows if, if, if not necessary, but the ones facing the street for it to match the new would be nice. Uh, but. I don't think I would make it a condition to replace all the windows. Because that if they don't need to be replaced, why replace them? But I agree with um, the thought process. Um, I think it's about time for this home to get completed, and uh, I'm glad that you're taking it on the project to, to get it done. Mr. Yu? I agree. I think from the pictures, you could tell that it's, it went a certain way, and then I guess all hell broke loose and it just didn't get completed. Um, I, I think that it matches the plans, that's fine, and we're I, I'm just kind of have a question about the front entry area. I think we all agree that, you know, we'll go with the existing sort of a brick um, entry piece, um, but I, I don't know, how, how do we define, I guess, that patio front area? Mm -hmm. uh, sort of the, that's I, think it, I think it was faced in brick in front of the garage, uh, in front of the, the living room. So then the size that it is now is what we're going to keep, and they, they can't expand well, out. I was going to address that with the trees. So. You know well, I mean? the other thing so. that you could also do is just say, like, this, like the brick stair, that that remain as is, although I believe, well, they may or may not need a railing there. Um, right, because it's hard to tell from the pictures if it's, you know, it's in like, size, if it's... It's is this six feet. about the size of Five. what's showing on this? No, no, no. This is yeah. It's the one on the plans was more generous. Okay, so then the idea would be to stay with what what's there and what's now, out there and now. not expand out. Right, that's an option you all have. Okay. Um, I would agree with the other comments, and I think it's a it came out pretty well for not having inspections. But I am concerned about the landscaping and the materials. Um, the tree, oak trees that are shown on the plan, the canopies are incorrect. So right now the canopies cover the entire front yard. And to expand on that existing uh, little balcony, I think, to leave it where it is, and if it requires a railing, I think that's fine, But and to leave the brick entry. And then I would make the uh, possibly suggest doing the driveway and brick on sand to get a pervious material to match what's there. The landscape plan is not used, gone by our bwise.com list, so you need to change that landscape plan to accommodate plantings that will grow under oaks because the entire front yard is going to be covered by that canopy. And I don't know was there, if there was going to be any landscaping for the hillside up in the back or not that might want to be addressed, either landscape it or not. Right now it's just... Uh, do currently, it's I, plan. currently. I think it. I think the city's going to require as a fire. Thing, is it? Are they in a fire oh, zone area? Yeah. I mean, they could landscape it or not, but it have to be cleared all the time. But it just needs to be addressed on the plan if they're going to. Right. The the, pr the previous plan just showed existing grass or something, which I don't. The two thousand and six plan, which I. May have been accurate then, but I don't think it's accurate now. No, it's just we. I mean, it's just yeah. So the um, condition reads: uh, landscape plans shall be submitted, which include plantings appropriate for slope to topography, existing oak trees, and style of the house. Um, is that sufficient? 
um, and s- then we can include are drought tolerant uh, when not under oak trees. There are um, plantings that will grow under oak trees. I mean, their entire yard is under oak, so they might want to. Like an oak-appropriate plant pal- palette? Um, just for our information, are those necessarily drought tolerant or yes. typically not? Okay. Okay, good. Um, so as uh, Condition 2 is written, sounds like that works for you? I don't have it. Uh, I'll read it again. The landscape plan shall be submitted, which include plantings appropriate for the slope topography, existing oak trees and style of the house, are drought tolerant, and are consistent with the surrounding neighborhood standards. I would. Some of those plant material may not be on your list, but they would be more appropriate to be planted under the oaks and not need the water. So I think it should read specifically plantings that will grow under oak trees. Okay. okay. Um, on that note, because there are some specifications <coughs> that needs to be worked out, there are specifications with the driveway that needs to be worked out. I like the brick idea, by the way, and it'll match well. Certainly the porch needs to be reworked, and then the entrance the existing needs to be integrated into the proposed design. So I think, at the least, providing a landscape plan that addresses the front setback for them to work with staff is probably a good idea because it'll really eliminate, it'll, it'll answer all these questions of how exactly is the porch going to integrate into the stair, how the landscaping is going to be dealt with underneath the oak trees and the driveway and so forth. So would you suggest that um, the landscape plan include uh, driveway materials, uh, entry, uh, retaining wall at the front with material, um, all of the uh, all the hardscape and landscape for the front as well as the landscaping for the entire property. Great. That helps. Any other comments, questions? Is there a preference that the board has for that retaining wall at the front? There was a comment from the owner that that wall would be faced in some stone to match? It could be done in the stucco with the brick cap. Okay. It's just like a three two and So a half. we'll add that as a consideration. Do have a motion? Okay. I'm sorry, Roger. I was going to read, um, I had a couple questions. Sure. Um, Revising the driveway uh, uh, for some purpose service is a condition, correct? Correct. Okay. Got the landscape plans, the stairs. Um, replace all windows or just street facing windows? I know they're. I would suggest the ones that are visible to the side as okay. well as the front. Visible all I don't windows know. visible from the public oh, right of way? That's fine. Okay. With similar windows as proposed on the cut sheet. Okay. And then there was also the, uh, the oak tree mitigation measures that I, uh, staff, would like to include as a condition to be placed on the plan. See, that would mitigate doing stuff to that balcony because you'd have to fence off the whole canopy, which would mean the front yard, basically. So they would not have been able to build that. Oh, I see what you're tree. saying. Yeah, okay. Uh, can we include that as a condition? Sure. Whatever, whatever you'd like. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is there a motion? I'd like to make a motion to uh, approve the project with the considerations and conditions as stated. I second it. Okay. A motion was made to approve the project with uh, the conditions read. Uh, this will be a roll call, Mr. Insua. Yes. Mr. Simonian. Yes. Mr. Yu. Yes. And Ms. Palmer. Yes. Great. Motion carries 4-0. Thank you. All right. We didn't address the neighbor's wall. Did you want? I know you've made the motion already, but if you wanted to. Well, we discussed we could do. that was really up to them. Yeah. To yeah. It's a legal matter. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, we do have some minutes. Um, 
January 12th of this year. We have a motion to approve the minutes. I was not here. I was here. Correct. I make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. I'm sorry, who made the motion? I did. For you. The motion was made to approve the minutes of January 12th, 2012. Roll call. Mr. Yu? Yes. Mr. Insua? Yes. Mr. Simone? Absent. And Ms. Palmer? Yes. Motion 3 1. Uh, we don't have any other announcements, so. Move to. I move to adjourn. Second.